My name is Mark Raboy. I'm the Beaverbrook Professor of Ethics, Media, and Communications at McGill and the author of Marconi, The Man Who Networked the World. The book has been shortlisted for the RBC Taylor Prize in nonfiction. I decided to write this book because I realized, I came to realize that uh, there was no adequate biography of Marconi and he was such an important figure and he was such an interesting figure. Uh, there are so many different questions that are raised by the life and career of Marconi but what really um, made me understand that it was possible was two things that happened in parallel. One was uh, the opening of some um, very important archives um, in Oxford. Uh, Oxford, at the early, at the beginning of the 2000s, um, acquired um, the papers of the Marconi Company, which was uh, a century old and they were trying to get rid of everything. And part of these papers were the personal papers, you know, that someone leaves around in their office, uh, ticket stubs and um, uh, a letter received but with no further context. Um, um, diaries, but not the kind of diaries that says I did this and that, but just appointments, appointment diaries, um, uh, bills paid and so on. So there was a tremendous wealth of material. At the same time, um, I happened to be on a trip in Italy for um, uh, another purpose and I, I went to visit the Marconi Foundation and I, I asked them, um, why is there no adequate biography of Marconi? And the answer I got was, it's because no one has been able to deal with his uncanny relationship with fascism. And I said to myself, I can try to do this. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't, I don't have all the baggage that, made it so, that has made it so difficult for um, Italian scholars to deal with uh, the, the life of Marconi and so on. As I was working on um, Marconi, of course, the work crept into uh, what I was doing as a as a professor. I mean, at as, at, at at McGill, I teach two kinds of courses. I teach a graduate level course on um, media and communication policy, and I mean, this is the, the the story of Marconi and the and the the, the fight for the regulation of the airwaves, and it, it's a fantastic story, which resonates uh, very much with students who are looking at you know, everything that's going on with the internet today and what governments are trying to do um, with it and so on. A, 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 another course I teach is a large undergraduate course on media and modernity in the 20th century. And of course, well, I have to say that it starts with Marconi. It's, I mean, it starts with, with um, the moment of, uh, of wireless in 1895 and how that really is, you know, from a communication perspective, the start of the 20th century. Marconi was one of the first people to talk about two-way communication, about the possibilities of using technology to actually communicate, not, not in a one-way um, top-down uh, system of the type that really developed in the 20th century with broadcast radio and television, which were the dominant, the dominant technologies. I mean, you, you had someone, either an omniscient figure or an entertaining figure, who talked down to everybody else um, who, who basically um, consumed what they were, uh, what they were told. Uh, Marconi actually, and as broadcasting developed, Marconi talked increasingly about the dialogic possibilities of, uh, of, the, of the technology and he advocated uh, for that when he had the opportunity to do so. So in that sense, we really do live in the communication world that Marconi envisioned. My name is Mark Raboy. I'm a professor at McGill and the author of Marconi, The Man Who Networked the World.